All right. Got some painting to do, as one does. What better way to ring in 2024 than by painting a bunch of monsters? I feel pretty good about that. Looks like the stream is healthy and coming through strong, so we'll pay attention to that. Hopefully we won't have any issues. Pull me up there. And we've got mimics, we've got monsters. We've got some here that um, have basically already wrapped up. Uh, Umber, absolutely, first of 2024, I'll take it. Um, let's see, so we've got the the bear rug here that's basically all set. Um, it could use a clear coat, but that's easy enough to do. I'm also happy with how the pot here turned out. We've got the normal one and then the transformed, transformed pot. So those are done and in the can. Also got this monster chair here which turned out pretty well so those are all in good shape and uh got some others here that i might want to touch up but really look at all this stuff so plenty to work with and stay busy with uh tonight um uh umber you said you uh, love mimics it's always funny to see players surprise finding out that the ceiling fan was actually <laughs> Uh, I've never done a ceiling fan before. That that would be that would be interesting. Um, let's see. I definitely feel like I want to do this uh, this trap door guy. Um, and I'll probably have to move some stuff around here just to give myself some room to work. Of course, we're all we're working up to painting this amazing sort of uh, table desk tchotchke mimic that I made um, but uh, since I haven't painted a ton of mimics like these three back here are really the only mimics that I've ever painted at all and so uh, kind of wanted to figure some stuff out painting all of these other ones before I paint my big one I'm gonna actually turn the music down for myself slightly There, that's a little bit better. Um, I think I've also got the clock here, uh, grandfather clock. So maybe I'll that one. That one looks like a. I don't know if you guys, if the camera can pick it up, bumpy, almost like reptile skin. So that could be kind of fun. Uh, got the painting here. Yeah. Yeah, this this being a mimic all along. No, I've got I've definitely got some. I'm, I'm eager to get it painted, but I want to force myself to paint all this other stuff because I know I can do a lot of cool stuff with it in my games. So um, let's just pick something and get going and move some of this other stuff out of the way. Maybe it may have some light basing to do here or there. Obviously, I still want to touch up some of these old paint jobs I've done, so I'll probably do that too, but let me kind of push some stuff out of the way. We can focus on just one. So this is also uh, a fun stream to be doing because it has only been um, pretty much a year that I've been doing anything online uh, with D&D, so um, streaming didn't come at the same time that making videos did, but this is kind of my first year doing Ryan Immel DM. Um, so it's an exciting kind of thing to, to cap off with a stream, why not? Ooh, and then some lovely coffee sounds, sorry. Actually just put up a video uh, like an hour or two ago, my last actual short video of the year. 
um, all about dramatic combat. So hopefully people get a kick out of that. It was fun to make. All right. So, so my hope also from a, from the the painting stream side of things, since I paint left-handed, I'm hoping that this will give me a better way to I'll be able to hold and paint without getting my own getting in my own way of the camera. So we'll see about that. And then I need some blue tack here for something like scatter like this. I don't really uh, this would be just like a, a trap door or just a door to a set of stairs maybe. I don't want to base this. Um, I'd much rather just sort of be able to drop it onto whatever whatever grid or whatever uh, terrain that I have. So instead for painting it, uh, since I don't have a, a base to grip onto, I'll still use these uh, paint handles. Uh, I'll just stick some blue tack on there to uh, hold it in place while I work. Seems like I may have lost music, so I'll take a look at that. Hopefully everything else is streaming out okay. Could also just be my earpiece. Check on that real quick. Yeah, just had the music drop out for a second. Uh, hey, Ninja Chihuahua, thanks for checking out the stream. Uh, perfect timing, just caught me when I was trying to get the, the music going again. Um, but uh, painting some mimics, talking about 2023 and what's coming up in 2024. Hopefully everybody's playing cool games. sure why it's failing but that's okay uh, we will make do with conversation then music was always just in the background anyway I'm not too worried about it um, so yes we've got normal trapdoor and the monster transform trapdoor let's get them going. These are going to be um, <clears throat> uh, Ninja. Yes, it is New Year's Eve where I am at least for another few hours. Uh, let's go ahead and hit it with some flat flat brown to start with. Oops. Sure that the cops are all in the same direction, so I don't. And a brush would be nice. Okay. Um, 
painting this army of mimics has definitely led to some awesome mimic conversation, mimic videos, mimic content. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. I think there's a lot worth talking about. Uh, Umber, I like that. Why not? One thing I was um, actually asking some some fellow DMs recently is what what they require or what a player can do to sort of determine if something is a mimic. So if the if the paranoia is there and they're going from room to room, the way I've always run it which I'm not totally crazy about, is that um, if a player stabs an object and it is a mimic, then that object basically is going to lose its uh, rigidity and sort of reveal itself when it's attacked um, in that way. Uh, which inevitably just leads to players going, okay, I walk around and I stab everything in the room. Which is not at all dramatic or exciting um, so I think if I you know with these at least when I run this again if I run a mimic encounter with a bunch of mimic miniatures like I have here I'm probably going to make something that's more of an investigation type of thing more of an you know, based around observation and maybe there's some testing of the environment, but I think like players are just going to hone in on that if it's the most effective. Like, great, we burn everything down, um, and that can be fine if that's the choice. But it feels like it feels like the way I've always understood it, it's it's the attack that reveals itself or that causes it to reveal itself to everyone, which to me just suggests that you know that's that's the way to. Um, try to track down what's the right one. I think that base is more stone, actually. Um, Ninja, you said, may I ask if there's a way a level 20 wizard, being basically a god, could cast two leveled spells without multi-classing? It's kind of odd how they can only... Um, the the way that you're phrasing that question makes me think that it's it's a... you're asking from a rules-as-written perspective right? You're asking, like, do the rules allow for this? Um, I'll be honest, I don't really know. <laughs> uh, haven't had that kind of situation happen a lot, but I know that if that was something that was interesting in my game, I wouldn't let the rules as written stop me, I guess. I'd be happy to just, like, homebrew something or uh, everybody just accept that that's how this works, right? I think that's totally fine, too. Uh, Umber, that's a great question. There's actually, um, I did a video recently about, like, what is, what exactly, where do mimics come from? And the, my video is okay, but the comments on it are really, really cool because people have shared, I think, like, uh, you know, tens of ideas of, of, how mimics are used in their world and I probably just need to do a follow up video with all of that because those are some pretty cool uh, ideas just a geek yeah I run an investigation check for mimics if they hit a certain mark they can maybe find an inconsistency or it accidentally breathing I just don't like them stabbing or destroying the place yeah that's fair um, ninja thanks for clarifying rules is written yeah I, I'm probably probably not going to be super effective at, at answering that for you um, it, they, they should um, but I, I, I don't so when I run sorcerers I allow them to um, if they want to uh, what's it called twin not twin spell um, what, what's it what's the What's it called? Where, whatever the ability is, there's it's not. I don't think it's twinning necessarily, but um, there's a spell. There's a there's a sorcerer 
point ability that allows them to cast two spells. There's some rinky-dink, like, there's some silly restriction to that that I don't like. So in my games, we just treat that as you can cast what you can do, kind of what it feels like you should be able to do. You should be casting two spells. For wizards casting two spells, especially at that high level, the vibe, just to, to answer, I guess, the question for my, my homebrew sort of um, interests, the vibe of a wizard at that level, it should almost be where the wizard is taking spells and turning them in, like, more and more of a wizard's spells start to become more like cantrips to me. Like, they start to become, there should almost be a suite of spells that is sort of that wizard's game, that's his sort of genre, um, as, as he sort of, you know, learns them and masters them and tweaks them. And using those, he's almost, you know, uh, he's almost unstoppable. I think. Like that's. I feel like that's the vibe of of, a, of an elder wizard. Yeah, ninja quicken. That's the right one. I need to move my view of the chat here into a spot that's actually a place I'm looking at, so I don't have to keep looking off to the side. That should work. Still figuring out a lot of uh, a lot of my setup here. I've only been streaming a few times, so still working it all out. I can't get the thing to stay where I want it to stay. I'll use some putty. Uh, Ninja 11 spells turning into cantrip. Scary, I'm going to use it. Um, yeah, right? Like, it's not going to be every spell, but I think as a wizard sort of defines who they are and what, what they're all about, I feel like that would be... that would be a, a, a good way to mechanically introduce that. All right see if that let's see if that helps okay so just like always as these guys need to dry I'll pick another set of things and do that okay this guy too okay cool so those Set over there. It's a good grandfather clock color. I mean, it, uh, wood can be in lots of different colors, right? Maybe maybe this is more of a tan, more of a light uh, sort of color. It could even be like an older kind of gray wood. Looks like the texture on it is all wood, so I can definitely put some some trim on the edging here and there to bring out some maybe brass or something. Certainly on the clock face, but I think it's pretty much going to be a brown clock. Make sure that I'm holding it in a good position here. Let's see. just don't want to paint everything like the same color of brown. Not if I can help it. Uh, this mug is not, as far as I know. I've stabbed it. It's fine. Ninja, can you hold action a leveled spell, making the trigger the moment you can another leveled spell? Does that work? 
Um, sounds like territory for like a magic item to me. It sounds pretty specific doing something like that, but I mean, anything's possible, right? It's just a matter of whether or not that particular twist on the rules is something that uh, the DM wants to allow. Hey, Cage King, thanks for swinging by. What do you think about the whole sorcerer should use con instead of charisma idea? If you're playing with a group of friends who don't abuse it to make it unbalanced, it could be very cool narratively. I don't know, uh, what is that idea? I'm not sure that I'm familiar. Hey Liam, thanks for checking out the stream. Figured I've never brought in the New Year painting uh, miniatures, so let's do that this year. Liam, I think uh, Constitution should only be used for the health and saving throws, right? I'm, I'm assuming that this is either like there's some, um, maybe this is a like a 1 D&D conversation or Unearthed Arcana, like I don't know. Like, um, I'm not opposed to anything if there's a justification for it, and it especially if it makes sense for a, for a given character. I, I really like I really like running D&D &D in such a way where every time someone plays a character, it feels like a custom implementation of that that class or subclass or whatever. Like I want, I want the characters to, you know, stand apart, stand unique, um, and be memorable in whatever way, you know, me and the player can dream up. I think is uh, technically living living creatures is that's that that's the limitation for for mimics right that's where you get into doppelganger territory or some other sort of you know mimicking monster type i don't as of yet i've never run a class of mimic that could actually become living creatures or imitate i should say living creatures That's what I thought. Okay. And this guy, I'm going to basically paint the same until we start adding the monster bits. Uh, what about corpses? It's a good question. Um, I think that's I think that's probably pretty allowable. Just a geek, there's a Reddit post I think that said that sorcerers should have con as a spell modifier as their control and grip. Yeah. Um, I think there's a I think there's a case to be made there. I think it can be it can be flexible like that. Sure. I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm probably probably a pretty permissive um, at least when it comes to sort of big ideas and trying them out, like I'm, I'm, I'm good to go for a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I'll, especially just like talking about it here. I mean, so much of the implementation of these things and how they work has so much to do with the table dynamic and what the players want and what sounds exciting and interesting to everybody. I mean, you know, everything's, everything's changeable. Everything's, everything can be revised you know, it's, it's just, it's just our playground. So if it makes sense, maybe it's worth play testing. <laughs> Umber, uh, don't, don't, don't let that, uh, dissuade you. It, um, It's all just ideas and, and sort of live live game design. That's sort of how I view that's that's what's cool about tabletop stuff is that the the game designer is sitting right there. 
and in, some, in most cases is making making adjustments on the fly and it's a fully like give and take like responsive game which is great so he's gonna have it looks like a couple of eyes he's got a mouth and all this reptile skin or some sort of bumpy skin I guess it could be doesn't have to be like a green skin but you know maybe we'll see hey thanks for the likes on the stream I think that's what those are right I see those hearts coming through appreciate that is a fine start to that. Cage, I understand that can be easily be abused and turned into something that can break the balance of a campaign, but it sounds so cool to imagine you sell a person being a manager, and that's the reason that they're able to. Um, totally. One one thing one thing that I find to be a bummer about sorcerers a little bit. Um, is the nature the nature of their class in the book when you're building it the very first thing that anybody playing a sorcerer does is um, sort of define where their magic came from and that always really bummed me out because in my mind a sorcerer being sort of this sort of mysterious almost like a fount of magic somehow where it's like I, I it's more fun to me if it's unexplained it's more fun if that's an element of their own um sort of character dilemma or character story maybe their goals is figuring out what exactly they are Hey, just a geek, have you experienced having only two members to DM for? I'm having trouble balancing cool encounters without adding an NPC to help my prep for a campaign with my friends. Uh, yeah, I ran a short-lived um, campaign with two players. We can talk about that. Uh, Purple Boy, everyone like the stream? Of course. Um, uh, so for two... Pe for for running running a game for only two player characters it's actually pretty close to running for one obviously it's a little bit better just mathematically speaking um, but a lot of the information that you can find as advice for running a solo game or a one person game would also carry over for this uh, Mac Oval's got some great videos about it um, at least one video, maybe. My, I, I always assume that he's got multiple videos that uh, w that are that are helpful for stuff um, like this. I would say that when you're running the scenarios, let's say let's say a combat encounter for two player characters, you can always scale the encounter up. It's really really hard to scale the encounter down. So if they're facing somebody, let's say they're facing a an assassin. Well, one assassin, you know, is a good place to start. And if that seems like they're going to make quick work, make quick work of it, which you'll know probably in one or two rounds, right? Uh, maybe half a round, you'll know. Uh, then there's another one that sneaks in the back, and then you can sort of balance it while you run it. Um, and eventually, you'll get a sense of what is the right amount of threat for those players, because every two players are, are, are different. Um, Napoleon, welcome back. Oh, uh, uh, well, uh, welcome again. Let us see here. Why can I not find the color that I'm looking for? Because I put it up here in such a way that it all blends together. Yeah, here we go. Something like this, maybe. Uh, 
uh, Dario, Happy New Year as well. Yeah, we'll be painting minis until until just that happens. So, and probably then some. Um, two player ideas. So again, other ideas that are also work for one player ideas. Um, start thinking about what happens if in a given scenario like you know it, it's worth at least considering that the player's health is a lot of different things not just their hit points um, so if you're running for one or if you're running for two um, Maybe these goblins that you never intended to totally wipe the party, uh, maybe they bring the, the, the members to um, uh, down to zero or starting to, uh, you know, take out the party like that. Uh, but maybe actually what they do is they steal their weapons and their gold and they leave them for dead. That could be, you know, a devastating outcome. Uh, that the players aren't going to enjoy, but it allows them to keep playing and get better and allows for you to balance the game. Things like that are going to be super situational and to your own taste as a DM and how lethal, how, how early and how lethal you want your game to be. Um, some people I respect do not like any of those ideas at all, but I think, you know, uh, it's it's at least something to consider when you're running for a smaller party like that. Uh, cool, Dario, congrats. Have a good one. Thanks for popping in. And um, in a two-player game, if you do, or any sort of short-handed game, if you do find it necessary to include an NPC to help, um, my preference is not to make any sort of NPC that's helping the party um, great or badass or anything. In fact, making them a bit of a drain, um, making them a target, if they're helping in combat at all, what they're doing is they're drawing attacks away from the players so that they can take care of things. It's a real bummer as a player to feel like, I think, that you're being one-upped by an NPC adventurer. Um, so I would I would avoid that uh, if I can. Nice, Umber. Definitely a unique companion. Hey, Mischief. Happy New Year as well. We're, I've not quite yet rung it in over here, but uh, hanging out and painting until then.
hopefully nobody has to wait too far into 2024 before their first game of the year. Games postponed for traveling? That happens. Well, that's not too bad. Uh, Cage King, you had an idea for a character who is a sorcerer but wasn't born magical at all. She became magical when an explosion happened in a building next to her while she was wandering an alley, leveled the building, and for a brief second the only thing that was left was a blinding purple light, and before she fell unconscious due to the explosion she caught a glimpse of the purple light. She woke up with a purple scar around her eyes and slowly came to realize that she was now magical. That's cool. And it definitely is a fun... Uh, Fun, fun sort of mystery tied to the character, right? What exactly is the origin? When it comes to magic and stuff like that, um, I, I my preference tends to be that more of it is, is unexplained than explained. I think the more it feels rote and familiar, the, the less exciting and, you know, I guess alive it feels um that's just me though throughout the campaign she would slowly solve the mystery yeah i love that that's that's a great character concept uh umbra would be funny for new year make the player super buff to awaken christmas uh, trees as a boss fight um yeah you know i've never really done super seasonal stuff like that but it's probably worth trying sometime This underdark gray kind of comes across as purple till it dries, I think. Could just be my wrong eyes, though. And caged, uh, I think, uh, caged king. I think the other way to to really amp up that sort of a of a player character mystery, you know, where do my powers come from, is finding ways to weave it into any of the other characters' backstories. Right? Um, maybe not right out of the gate, but finding out that things that they're all looking into are connected in some way can be kind of cool and and draw their paths closer together. Um, mischief, you've been getting mischief. 
been getting into Ravenloft recently and reason love how easy it was to create a domain of dread. Huh. Ravenloft is something I've not tried. I definitely admire it all from afar, but just have not done anything with it yet. Let's see, give those some time. What do I want to do? Well, this guy definitely needs needs a coat. Where's my? I thought I had another. hat needs an undercoat which is easy to do if I can I'm still getting a sense for where all my paints live on my new shelf it's not super it's not super new I guess but it's it's new given how few times I've painted with paint <laughs> from it Uh, you also had a thought that the light was some kind of lesser deity or something of that nature, something becoming visible for a brief moment, uh, imbuing magic. I think that's cool. Yeah, it'd be interesting to sort of, um, you know, you could have that sort of investigation the search for understanding be tied it would almost feel like you know x files or fringe or something like that like any inst any time a purple light or purple magic was referenced in the world is probably going to catch that character's attention and you could really use that to you know bring about some some weird some weird stories not always maybe related specifically but enough times to keep the to keep the player's interest You know what? What other ways has that pur purple magic affected the world? Yeah, I would agree. It's more a sorcerer than warlock. I agree with that. these paintings are interesting and I, I, I held off on painting them before they're pretty simple um, I might still hold off on them because I'm not 100% sure how I want to attach them to bases yet yeah cage king I that would be cool you could also um, the um, the interesting dilemma there too that you could create is just because there's a source of power for a player character in this purple light that you're talking about if there is an intelligent something behind it um, that doesn't mean that it has necessarily the same morality or even intentions for good or bad that the players do and it could be that that force has no qualms at all with the big bad um it could be that they even find themselves aligned in some in some way uh and so then the player has this sort of struggle with sort of its origin point in their adventuring life against the big bad and figuring out 
not necessarily choosing one or the other because it's not really about that, but drawing that contrast between themselves and, and where they came from is going to help define them and who you know what their perspective and stance is. Purple Boy, New Year in three hours. Uh, not quite. I've just got a little over two for me, but uh, yeah, just about there. Just about there. quick coat painting brown over black I guess painting anything over black is always a can take a couple of times just want to get nice rich color out of it oh yeah that wasn't the uh, that wasn't the brown that I was using I was like man that but that's okay Add some character. This monster clock, or this uh, monster sort of grandfather clock, I guess, brings me back to uh, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, um, Goosebump story that I read as a kid. Um, the Cuckoo Clock of Doom. Love that book. Any other uh, Goosebumps fans in here? You guys uh, ever read those books before or aware of them? I realized uh, recently just how much of an influence those books have, have, have had on me over the years. Just how much I sort of retained from them. Yeah, Cage. There's a ton. There's a ton of cool opportunity in the game. I think a lot of ways to do really unique stories that are almost not possible in any other way. Really, that's a great thing about tabletop games.
so these guys remind me of the cuckoo clock of doom the goosebump story about a little boy traveling through time which if you know me it's probably not a surprise that that's one of my favorite stories i read as a kid and it's um you know this clock uh comes from an antique store and he turns the head on the cuckoo backwards and he begins aging backwards and so he starts at you know his 13th birthday or something and then is has it again and then goes back a few years back a few years and it's about really can he get back to the clock in the antique store as a toddler you know with his own brain still intact uh, to turn it back around or is he going to basically poof himself out of existence it's a great little uh twilight zone story for kids i love it uh what's up dungeons and chronics thanks for checking out the stream Just painting mimics and uh well i guess yeah painting miniatures and wasting away the last <laughs> little bit of 2023. Uh, how's it going? <clears throat> Let's see. Probably do a bit of a dry brush on the wood, which I'll probably overbrush onto the gray. That's really no big deal, though. Do I have something approximating a dry brush nearby right now? I think I, think I can probably use that. Texture that wood with some light tan, banshee brown, technically. Uh, what's up, Kark? Thanks for checking out the stream. Painting up some mimics. Seeing how many of these I can get out of my way into the new year. So I've got this whole army that I want to paint up for some silly reason. What is the color of the tongue coming out of the basement? Or the cellar, probably a cellar. Um, well, I really liked sort of the pink and red tongues, but I've made a few of those. I liked using the more kind of monsterish colors, maybe a green tongue. Cage King, that's a good question. A cleric that doesn't know the entity. Um, maybe it's all flavor, right? It's all like, is it possible technically? Absolutely. Narratively. So you don't want 
you probably you probably for the trope of the cleric you probably don't want them communicating with a force that they don't understand right Kark Medivari is awesome so you probably don't you probably don't want them communicating because that feels very warlock and that feels like a cleric wouldn't do it but what if a cleric is just tied into a maybe a long almost forgotten practice or a um you know a divine um what would you call it you know forgotten rites or something and and maybe that maybe that um that sort of spiritual pathway could be co-opted by any number of forces and that's part of the struggle of keeping that alive is almost the the the, the cleansing or the, the the purity of that discipline that the cleric follows is is maybe always under threat Kark, the uh, serious answer to your question is that um, Medivari is a friend of mine. Uh, when I uh, when I put up videos back in August about doing some uh, crafting for DM at Gen Con, that's, uh, that was the artist behind Medivari, was one of the DMs in that game. We just kind of run in the similar circles, and so uh, that's where that comes from. It was his game. Uh, his name's Nate Utesh behind Metavari. Um, he was the DM for a game at Gen Con that involved a race through the desert on fantastical ships, uh, fantastical boats, um, and vehicles. And I crafted, let's see, I made a purple worm, um, purple worm uh, with a raft on it. So it was like a boat. I made a goblin kind of war machine which i'm not totally crazy about that was the, a rush job um an arcane boat like an arcane wizard's boat and uh oh like a construct like a like an uh, an artificer's sort of uh hobbled together like invention contraption that they that, that was the one that that they got to to sort of the players got to sort of choose and assemble their pieces um, as part of the game. Yeah. And I still need to run my own adventures with some of those uh, fantastical desert racing vehicles. They've just been on my shelf and a couple of them I want to revisit because I think I could I could polish them up a little bit more but you know that's for after mimics right that's psh, I, don't, I don't have time for that nonsense right now I got mimics to paint hey Sarah we are painting mimic monsters and leading up to painting this guy that I crafted on stream um I don't know, a few weeks ago now. He's been primed and waiting to be painted. Uh, this is like a toy chest uh, and clay turning into sort of a... I mean, I guess you could say a giant mimic, which I could certainly use it in a game, or just sort of something to have on my shelf, on my desk, as a great big paperweight. Uh, Chronic. What do you think is the best disguise for a mimic? Hmm... A good question. Um, something. Uh, I think the best disguise, my favorite disguise for a mimic is always going to be the thing that it thinks it can hide in the form of really quickly before the players come in from the next room. That's always going to be my favorite. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, I, it's only the. Um, 
second or third time that I've ever worked with um, uh, Das Clay like that. Really the second time that I've made like a monster. So I guess I'm getting comfortable with it. No, it was the third. The first time I worked with Das Clay was making my Elder Brain fight. My, I made an Elder Brain boss fight thing that is uh, fine. I need to revisit it at some point. Um, but uh, then the second time was making the Purple Worm um, vehicle. And the third time was that that big mimic that uh, I figure once I get done painting all of this variety of different mimics I'll have a pretty good sense of how I want to paint that big guy and that's sort of my reward for getting all of this other painting done uh, Chronix you said can a mimic be a weapon or a shield um, well not traditionally not a usable weapon or shield right generally speaking you know it can look you know to the to the to the naked eye it's basically going to look identical to anything you know assuming it's an in inanimate object and not something that's currently alive so it can mimic that you know pretty much perfectly but once you go try to swing a sword or protect yourself with a shield you're going to find out pretty quick that that's that's not actually a shield. Let's see. So, uh, I feel like the I feel like the the change changeover from one year to the next brings up a lot of uh, oh hey Pikachu, great name. I feel like I've heard of it somewhere before, but it's probably nothing. Mm, I don't want to do it. Maybe I'll touch up the metal pieces. Touch up the metal. Let's see, so probably like plate and then like a dark. Gunmetal blue. No. What's this? Gunmetal gray. That works. Uh, you know, uh, Pikachu, you just remind me of it. There is a, um, I think is it, I think it's on Netflix, but there's a new stop motion Pokemon show um, that looks, looks very cute. I love, I'm a, I'm a sucker for anything stop motion, so I'm always curious when that kind of stuff pops up, and it, it looks pretty good. Kind of reminds me of, um, what was that, uh, that like Yoshi's Epic Yarn or Crafted World or something, I think those were the two games. Kind of has that aesthetic, which is a very good aesthetic. Hey, Caden, more mimics, that's right, I'm trying to trying to get as many of these things, trying to leave as many of these things in 2023 as I can. Don't want to bring any more of these along with me than I have to, right? Oh. Airbrushing is something that I haven't gotten into yet, but I should. Sometimes I am slow to adopt new ways. Mark, you had an idea for a settlement that was entirely 
made of mimic creatures disguised as items all around. I don't know if it's been done. Um, I assume at this point that nearly every idea under the sun has been done in some way or another, but that doesn't have anything to do with whether or not it's worth doing and exploring on your own. Because you haven't done it, and your way of doing it is probably different than anybody else's way of ever doing it, so go for it. We need your way. All we, all we have are our ways. We don't have the way you would do it. Nobody, sorry, just naturally drifting off of camera because I'm a terrible streamer. Okay. Sarah, I store them if they're if they're really big, I, I put them on shelves. And if they're small enough, I have these little um, plastic organizers that stack together and into these kind of like towers. And they're not labeled as well as I would like them to, but they're you know they they stack and they slide away. Um, I think I have a video where I mention them. Um, I have a video about like miniatures. I should probably start a playlist. Probably I'm currently designing a town for my D and D campaign, and I put a, a dried up well, with cave systems, and rust monsters and bears in the well. That sounds awesome. Uh, caged, like the idea. Uh, there's a book that was given to this person, but the pages were blank. It was given to them by their fathers who was dying. It was instructed to pray to the book every night, like a Bible. And after a while dedicate for each night. They began having odd dreams of an entity, not necessarily communicating more like visions over time to continue to... Um, sounds great. Sounds like an awesome concept to run with. I also have... Um, Sarah, a bunch of unpainted minis that are organized separately um, because I have probably as many miniatures in tubs unpainted as I do anything else. All of these were in a tub unpainted until really this past month or so. And those I try to organize into, uh, the unpainted stuff I try to organize into Ziploc bags with labels. So it's like mimics went into a bag or, you know, animals go into a bag or... Uh, soldiers go into a bag, stuff like that, just to make it some some sense of organization. Uh, Meyer, uh, Hero Quest, yes, I have heard of it. Hopefully, it was a good game. I've heard of it. I don't think. In fact, now I know. I've I've never played it, but I would certainly be curious about it. Who was it? Shoot. I don't remember exactly who had asked about a two-player game, but I just thought of another source of inspiration um, or another way to think about two-player games is to, uh, at least the way I think about that or where my mind goes is like a detective show or, or um, movie or whatever um that that sort of vibe would probably play well with a two-player game and probably some cool ideas you know looking into awesome detective stories you know for different sorts of encounters and different ways things can unfold that is keyed for there being two two characters
how about if a whole town's made up of mimics, but there's still people living there, and the people have seen what happens when the mimics are confronted, so it's very important, you know, culturally and socially in the town to not acknowledge any of the odd things about the town with regard to the mimics. It's almost, it would feel almost like a mass psychosis event, right? Where it's like they're, you know, or, or even they are a threat to the players in and of, you know, on, on their own because they are worried about what will happen. You know, they're like almost like protecting the players in a sense from, from what could, what could happen. Chronics you've not played yet? What? That's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you to get the chance. Are you uh, drawn to it as a player or as a dungeon master? Like, which would you, which would you want to be? can definitely be tough to find a group. That's for sure. That's awesome. I think it's pretty fun. I'm, I'm biased, of course, but... Uh, Caden, you confirm that it is better to... Uh, um, I believe it. set take a look at this clock it's a pretty even coat um, I think I have sort of a pale color or a lighter color for some sort of highlighting or not highlighting but well, I guess I could start there I guess I could do some dry brushing on the wood it's probably a good idea See, if I, if I used an airbrush, then I wouldn't be able to uh, talk to all you lovely people while I paint. I have to have a whole booth or do it in the garage. That, do, that doesn't sound very fun.
Now granted, it would be 10 to 20 times faster. Even though I do tend to find really, um, really, really clever ways to take longer to do things. So I'm sure I could find a way. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all just a, it's a matter of implementation, you know, right? It's a matter of if there's something interesting to explore. getting there uh, for sure yeah scared of the mimics definitely or maybe the town knows where they're from and it's not the mimics that they're afraid of but the uh, source of the mimics and they don't want to upset whoever or whatever is responsible for them so they just try to let them be try to live together and not stir the pot. Tabletop notch? I don't think so. What's that? Probably should use some sort of off white for the face of the clock. Um, or maybe like a pale, I don't know, white. I always hesitate to go straight to white. Um, but I mean, it's a clock, so that's some sort of off white is probably the way to go.
maybe the mimics want to leave town and travelers passing through is a good opportunity for the townsfolk to swap their items or to assist the mimics with basically uh, stashing away, hiding away, and leaving town. And townsfolk are happy to cooperate in order to get them out. Cool. Uh, I will have to check that out, Cage. That sounds neat. Tabletop Notch is a good name. I like the sound of that. Entire plan for a five hour dungeon crawl tonight. It took a lot of planning, but it was worth it for campaign reunion, my past campaign. That's awesome. Wow. That sounds amazing. Uh, nice work. That's awesome. That sounds like it'll be a trip. Merrick, I, I I can't complain, you know. Can't complain at all. It it is more and more tempting though to to start painting my uh big crazy mimic over there. I'm really excited to get that one to get that one started, but these this all these mimics have been sitting around in my craft space in some form or another for like over 2 years. So, they they got to get done. Yeah, Clark liquid wear too. I like that too. the eye but this does match uh, caged I really like that concept of a didn't like recaps for getting people caught up and joining later that's a that's a great experience make it a lot easier to probably jump into a lot more shows. D&D is, or any sort of tabletop gaming, is not a very friendly thing to, entertainment-wise, to jump into late in the game. You've got a lot to dig through normally, so it's a great idea. Details on the clock. Um, getting there. Definitely 
get there. dry brushing the sort of rough stone. For some reason I based this one just on rough stonework there. couple of tiny little touches on this clock face. Um, it's definitely going to need a wash. The whole thing will need a wash, but I'll wait on that, I think. First I'll do the metallics on it. So it's got a, a doorknob. Just really, 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 really tiny. What system do they run, Cage? Or do they jump around a little bit? Sure, I'm gonna like You know what? That's not bad. I play 5e. Okay. I don't care so much, but it's a it's a curiosity. Just was wondering. Okay. And I'll do three different washes on this guy. It's going to need a wash for the base. It can be 
known that's going to want a shade for the bulk of the clock. Can be that. It's shook up a bit. And then some sort of a light touch, like a light tone for the clock face, or maybe like a like a sepia wash, maybe, or like not not a sepia, like a flesh wash. Just there's a light tone that'll work. Just something really, really a little bit, just to just to add something to that pure white because that seems so so stark on its own. Sounds like a cool concept. Outhouse Mimic. Love that idea. Probably had, it's probably a decent size to it too. I, uh, when I was looking up ideas for my Mimic out of clay over here, my chest Mimic, ran across a lot of really cool stuff people have made you know giant barn mimics and gazebo mimics and mansion and and bridge mimics i'm like okay i'm gonna have to build a big epic piece of terrain and a and a, and a variant that's a mimic at some point um not yet but definitely at some point it's gonna it's gonna have to happen That's super cool. Uh, Chronix, did you put that up on your channel too? Foam board is the way to go. I feel like you can make anything out of that. I've used foam board before, not the, well, no, actually both kinds, just like the cheapest white uh, foam board with the paper you can tear off. I've used it to make like compartment dividers in my shelves before. It's like, okay, I really want another level here. Let me just, you know, craft together. Um, cool. Uh, you know, it didn't look great, but it totally worked for what I wanted to put on there. And worked is better than perfect. Now 
there that should just provide just a little bit a little bit of texture a little bit of fade to that that white clock face I think, I think it'll look better that way certainly looks like a clock to me probably wish that I would have taken the time to put it on on wood floorboards like everything else but not everything else but like certainly like the you know the mimic that it turns into certainly like that okay so now we've got monster transformation time maybe I can use uh, the book that I was talking about as inspiration hold on just a second Everybody has their favorite set of children's horror novels that they read when they were younger, just uh, ready to reference over on their shelf at a moment's notice. So this is uh, one of my favorite books as a kid, The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. And so colors-wise, um, certainly this uh, blue-eyed sort of yellow cuckoo can be some inspiration there. So let me tuck that over here. And I definitely like the blue eyes. And yellow and orange elsewhere. Kark, nice, yeah, awesome. putting those recommendations to good use. Yeah, it almost, yeah, I like that. I like this a lot. So like an orange and a yellow, which actually shouldn't be too bad using that on a clock like this. So, I'm gonna need some yellow. I'm going to want some sort of a more orange, maybe translate with some tan. Uh, hey, thanks, Jack. I appreciate it. It's a. Uh... Wait, do you mean do you mean on the Goosebumps cover? Because it's way cooler than than the one that I'm making. Let's see. Eh, maybe that color. Is this an orange? Now yeah, that's supposed to be an orange. And the, the the blue of the eyes. It's like a very particular, like electric blue eyes. All right. So I think that. we treat the mouth sort of as the beak then that kind of becomes uh, uh, hey Vin uh, happy new year to you as well okay so let me actually start on the mouth see if I can get there with this orange this orange is a mess I need I need what, what are those uh spinner things for paint yeah I think that's what I need because I'm not going to be able to bring that one back to life so I can use something that's sort of in that range close enough 
that it will work. Maybe these two together. What's a little what's a little wet blending? And besides, it's just it's just inspiration. Doesn't have to be perfect. Definitely take a couple more coats to get there, but it's a start. And then let's try, let's just try coming in with some yellow on the scales here. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens. Does anybody else always start painting minis on the back side? It's like less stressful to sort of test test out the next color before moving around to the front. So I'm really only trying to hit up the, the scaly parts. Like I'm not being super clean about it. I'm kind of just letting the brush go and do whatever it wants on them because I'm not, not necessarily interested in trying to 
paint out individual scales. I don't think I'd be good at it anyway. But maybe it'll also provide a little bit of variation, especially with multiple coats on here. Coming in sporadically like this. Maybe that'll help. I think I will just go over the whole eye area though because I don't think I want any brown in those areas. So we'll take care of that. Chronics, that's an excellent question. What is my favorite favorite thing this year? I think I know what my favorite thing will be of 2024. Um, um, there there are a few videos that I've made here in sort of the last third of the year that people seem to, to really like. And, and I was maybe, you know, really kind of stepping out and trying to be kind of really creative, put a lot of effort in and, and, and put in a lot of extra work. And it's really nice to see those things come through. Um, I'm really excited about the possibility of some of this streaming stuff on YouTube. This is actually pretty new. Um, just recently, I streamed a little bit at the beginning of the year on Twitch, uh, but that proved to be pretty difficult. Um, Twitch is kind of like broadcasting in a in a desert. Um, it's really really hard to get people over there. So this is, I mean, this is you know, wildly better uh, being over here on YouTube. So I'm excited about that. And I am really happy with sort of, uh, it's not even necessarily an external accomplishment, but internally I was able to sort of find a way to, to, to think about streaming in a way that I can make sense of. Turning on a stream and just like going has always felt like a weird endeavor, but finding a way to turn my different stream concepts into shows and sort of giving them titles and giving them, you know, episode numbers that, that I really like. Um, and it makes me excited to do more streams. Um, so that's a good thing. And then I have some ideas that I really like that I don't feel like I've executed on perfectly yet, so or, or super well. Um, so those will probably be something I'm more proud of in the future. Um, I'll say the YouTube channel uh, really sort of woke up this last month of the year in a, in a big way. It was sort of slowly growing, and I was you know, plenty happy with it. It was just fine. Um, and then just sort of saw explosive growth in the last month, which has been just a ton of fun to see. Um, so I'm pretty proud about that too. All right, so there's some, a mess of scales. I get the top two.
Tan. Tan, I'm not really sure what I want to do with yet. I might may or may not use any tan on this right now. I may be able to get what I want with some washes and extra extra coats. But some big, big blue eyes. Can definitely do that. definitely going to be a wild looking monster but uh, but I'm here for it I'm down for it uh, I am going to grab another drink here and I'll be right back um, let's see so while I'm gone here I'll put my put my reference inspiration here on the table <laughs> okay let me get some uh more coffee i'll be right back
right. Coffee powers all things. But I do maybe need to get a chair that isn't so creaky. A poor old chair just doesn't want to do it anymore. I love it. This is definitely not the type of monster that I thought that I would be creating. Hey Matthew, hi, do you know how to run episodic sessions? Hmm. Um, I think so. I think I've done that before. It depends what that means um, to everybody involved. Uh, and thank you so much. Thanks for checking out the stream too. Uh, and happy new year. Um, yeah, I think I, I think episodic. So when I think episodic, I think of self-contained adventures that may marry up to some larger thing, you know, over time. Um, but the challenge with D and D of episodic is that for me, that means that each of those sessions is going to feel maybe like a one shot, feel very very tight, very very controlled. Think you know, I think of episodes of of like a TV show, you know. Um, that's where my mind goes, uh, and that is that's that is no small feat, I should say. That, that um, even running a one shot and pulling it off all in one session is is not uh, not an easy thing always to do. what I want to do is go in with another another sort of flavor of yellow so this was daemonic yellow okay in the first session of rolling with difficulty does a somewhat episodic campaign cool the first season the first season of it does cool let's do like a gold yellow mix in a gold yellow with this. curious what everybody's favorite TV show is. Or maybe what comes to mind. Because favorite TV shows may be impossible. <laughs> Meyer, hey, this is celebrating. What are you talking about? I like these options so far. 
Stranger Things is cool. Bob's Burgers. Matthew said, what type of paints do you use? Any recommendations and our favorite type of paint? Mine is Doctor Who. Um, I use all sorts of paints. Um, I don't consider, I'm not necessarily loyal to any, I don't really care as long as it's a mini paint, it's a shade that I want to have, I'll go for it. Um, right here I have Game Color, uh, Army Painter, Model Color, so that's a Vallejo, that's Game Color, Game Color. I have Vallejo Washes, um, a lot of the other brands, Model Color I mentioned. So yeah, pretty, pretty much I just pick up you know, whatever brands are uh, sitting on the shelf at my local game stores, and that's what I'll that's what I'll go with. Meyer paint sets to, to start painting. You know, I, I don't. I, um, I think the um, is it is it uh, Wizkids who's put out. I think they've put out some like paint, like learn to paint starter boxes that seem pretty decent. There's like a Manticore. I think there's a Troll, and the idea is it sort of comes with the paints that you can use on that model. And I think that's probably a good approach. Um, that would be, you know, that. That would be a fun way to start because you're sort of starting with both. But um, I don't. If you're if you're getting if you're getting into it new, right? Then I mean my this is just how I approach things. So my recommendation is find a miniature that inspires you that you're like I want to be able to paint that, and then just pick up, uh, you know call it five to ten paints that you think you'll use on that and then go home and do that and then when you run into a wall then you've got another reason to go back to the game store um, you can pick up big boxes of paint sets uh, I never did that um, I just sort of picked them up over time and sort of you know eventually you grow a collection most of the paints that i have on my shelf I, it's the first bottle of that paint that i ever bought and i'm still using it so um it's just a something that you'll sort of find what you like over time through trial and error that's that's what i've done chronics new year's resolution it's for your channel crafting and tabletop. Uh, New Year's resolution. Um, the legitimate one is now that I have my website set up properly, so that's ryanimaldm.com. Uh, previously I went to a link tree, now it's an actual website where I have like a streaming schedule. I want to maintain that streaming schedule. Um, right now there's not a lot on there, but I want to try to fill that out and stick to it. Because I think this is, you know, really cool uh, process. I will be doing some longer form videos um, that hopefully feel a lot like my shorts, uh, my short videos. Uh, so those are the two big things right now. Crafting and tabletop. Uh, I think this. I think this year one of my games will will come to an end. I've got. Um, three games that I run right now and, and two of them are pretty long running and one of those is the longest running and I think it's gonna it's gonna end this year and so I want to do that well um, yeah uh, crafting wise I mean uh, if I can make something every week then I'm, I'm pretty happy um, I didn't necessarily do that all this year while I was sort of building out my content and figuring out videos and stuff like that I think um, you know it's like <laughs> where I started making videos at the beginning of the year, now it's like I storyboard my videos, which is like crazy. So like the iterative process for, for how I make content at this point is like its own beast. Um, it's its own craft, I guess. But um, yeah, crafting more, painting more, that's what these streams are 
helping me to do. Uh, Matthew said, how would you go about running a mysterious merchant that players would not try to hijack? Speaking of merchants. Um, so, why do players attack merchants? Right? Players want what merchants have, and they want it for free. However, you know, especially new players. Like I, I always, I, I, I go pretty soft on this, um, on this idea for for newer players or players that are early on in a campaign. But experienced players who are trying to pull one over on merchants, uh, the that merchant would not be able to sell the things that entice the players without being able to protect himself. So I think like, you know, anything you can come up with. So um, once for a new player, a new player uh, swiped a potion bottle from uh, a potion uh, merchant, um, you know, sent the old lady looking over there and then swiped the potion bottle here. And, and you know, sessions later when they went to use it, they came to find out that this potion that they thought did X actually was just mundane, was just water. It didn't actually do what it said because that was the enchantment on the potion bottle when it wasn't purchased correctly. It was a really soft failure, right? Where it's like, oh, I swiped it and nothing happened to me. Cool, I'm awesome. And in reality, all of those potions just uh, went to waste uh, that were stolen that way. Um, but if I have players that are either working as a group it becomes like a group thing if it's a bigger deal or if it's maybe players that have been around a couple of times. Uh, what's the <laughs> what's the infamous uh, Runehammer um, uh, Runehammer advice uh, that has always stuck out in my memory? Um, there was some stream that he was doing. If you haven't checked out Runehammer's uh, channel, it's one of my big inspirations. Uh, love that guy. Love his work. Um, somebody at one point asked him, "How do you scare your players?" It's so hard. Uh, it's so difficult to scare to, to scare my players or to like uh, offer up a real threat now that they've leveled up to a certain point. And he said, uh, kind of gave the, the camera a confused look in my mind. That's what I remember him doing, is looking confused. He's like, uh, say this attack does 10 D10 damage, uh, and that's the first attack. And he said, Any, anybody will get scared at that point. Um, <laughs> And I always think about that, that that um, scaring and, and making a threatening situation is sometimes just a matter of of, of dice. Um, practically and like within the world, especially if when you want, you want to use spells that exist or, or written uh, rules as written kind of spells, uh, look into wards and glyphs and stuff like that, like protective wards um, on merchant trucks or, or, or you know caravans or shops. Um, if you try to do anything with particularly magical things, then it could trigger all sorts of effects that doesn't even require somebody to cast something on you. Um, uh, but I, mean, I, I would, for, for something truly high level, and if the, 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 the merchant is aware of it, I, I mean, almost anything would be possible. I mean, the, 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 the merchant's shop is sort of their domain, and while their magic may be limited in certain ways, I think within their space, oof, that's I, you. You don't want to mess with the person that owns a magic shop. That that's that's my take anyway. Uh, thanks, mischief. Yeah, eleven k. Uh, it's um, basically. I think I started December with about five or six thousand, and now I'm at like twenty one thousand. So yeah, <laughs> it's been a pretty a pretty nutty uh, month. For the channel, uh, merchant boss fight, absolutely. Uh, Chronics, I never thought it's a good idea to steal from someone selling weapons. Great point, Matthew. That sounds awesome. It reminds me of when you try to steal from uh, Karen in the video game Hades. Uh, Matthew, no questions don't bother me at all. I love the. Uh, I hope I hope my answers are helpful. Um, no, it's totally fun to dive into these topics. That's that's why I do the streams, because I just love talking about this stuff. Yeah, bit of a 
better blue in that eye. I think I'll come in with a, I have a, a micron pen that I use usually for like pupils, just like a pen that I can like dot the eyes. And I think this one will be a fun one to have the pupils all go in different directions. Feels like what that should be. Uh, John Michael, one way I do it is the Magic Merchant doesn't have everything the players could want, um, but offers to find it for them given they do some quest build rep. Yeah, so um, shopping, is a, whole, is a whole topic in and of itself. There's so many different ways to run shopping in both good and bad ways. Um, you know, at a certain at a certain point, at a certain level of the game, shopping should almost entirely be, okay, what are you looking for? Um, and if it seems reasonable that it would be there, then that's great, then they find it and can start haggling, right? Because who doesn't like a little bit of haggling? Uh, but otherwise, John Michael, exactly what you said. If it's something exotic or way out there, I don't like telling players flat no um, because my general advice to my players is that if you want something for your character, don't ask me. If you want a magic item, if you want a piece of armor, uh, I don't know, if you want a wagon, whatever it is, don't ask me the DM. Make your character ask people in the world, and I guarantee you, you will find a path to that. It might not be an easy path. It might not be cheap or free. It might be dangerous, but you're going to find that path. If players are looking for the mystical boots of, of, of you know, Misty Step or something, uh, if my players are looking for a magic item that does something very specific and very... Um, you know, interesting to them. Uh, odds are that by the time they ask two or three people in my world, somebody's going to remember, oh, there's a, a legend about somebody that did something like that, or there's a map, or actually I know um, somebody in the next town that could help you with that. You're going to find a way there. The, the world is going to open up to you, um, in my world at least, if you actually use it to try to find these things. That's what I always try to encourage my players to do. Also because I hate the idea that I'm giving something to players i don't want to do it it's just not it, it's just not interesting to me um it's like hey i really want a sword that does whatever it's like go into the world ask the world for it talk to the world about it don't talk to me about it Uh, mischief, how can I make an adventure while also keeping the world interesting and usable as a unique setting? How do you mean? What's what, wh how are how are these things uh, are these things at odds with one another? I'm not sure I understand your question. I'm interested by it, but I'm not sure I understand it. Hmm. What? I really wish that orange color I had. I need more, need more oranges, obviously. Small scale adventure that leads to a large one. Gotcha. Um, think big and then go small. 
what is the biggest threat that would ever occur in your game world and maybe the clock is ticking and it's going to happen, right? And then you say, okay, if that were going on, how would that affect things kind of one level down? And if that were happening, what would happen one level down? And if that were happening, down, down, down. And bring that scale basically as far down as you can until, you know, maybe at the topmost level it is that, you know, um, the king's mind has been replaced and he is, is he's setting things into motion to allow, <clears throat> you know, uh, mind flayers to basically emerge from the Underdark and take over the material plane. Maybe that's the big scale thing. But if you scale that all the way down into the town, it's like, you know, the Baron in this area is, is really sending out some odd decrees. He wants us to do this now. Like, we don't think this makes any sense. Like, you can scale down any big threat down to something regional or in a town, and it, it can trail up to, but like, if that's actually happening, if the king's mind has been replaced and he's doing things, he's probably ignoring certain threats and problems that are around, and it's probably becoming a bit more chaotic, you know, out throughout the region. Um, and you could have an adventure all about sort of one of these villains that has risen up due to the king's carelessness, and you only find out as that story goes on that it's connected to this larger, bigger threat. So that's that's the type of I think that's how you take, in just in general, whatever you're trying to do, taking the biggest threat and then scaling it down and making sure that sort of the things will lead to one another or are connected in some way. Um, yeah, that's, that's the way I would approach it. This guy just needs some washes to really kind of pull it together. A few things touched up. Have to do the teeth. See if I have a good. Let's see if I can make some pupils here. This is always, you know, eyes. At least it's a monster, so it's okay if it looks whatever. Uh, Matthew, thank you for that. Um, I have only been running D&D &D for six years. Crafting for less time than that. Monsters as the main uh, BG. Do you mean like, like big bad, like the BB, the the big bad evil guy type of thing, or or just no monsters at all, anywhere?
Uh, so one of my one of my games right now uh, has technically a human big bad. Um, that human big bad believes, and may be right, uh, that he uh, was once a god and is attempting to reincarnate himself as that. But in terms of his machinations in the world, he's just a just a human, just a very very crafty, awful human. Um. That's it, though. That's the only one that I've done that with. Uh, Matthew, when players level up, how would you go about making zombies and skeletons stronger, or would you use them in hordes? So anything can be leveled up. Um... A stat block is just what we use. A stat block isn't something that players actually interact with. Players only interact with the world that's put in front of them, whatever they experience. And what they experience is that an 18 hits, but a 15 doesn't, or a 17 doesn't hit and a 22 hits. Um, that's all they really know. So if what you want is a set of stronger skeletons, um, pick pick a different, pick a stat block that is the right size and then reflavor it to be your skeleton. Uh, who's to say that these skeletons aren't, they, they, weren't, they weren't barbarian tribesmen in their previous life and so they just are tougher. I think that's fine. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do it. I think there's other ways that you can ramp up the difficulty by introducing different terrain, different weapons, different scenarios, um, putting other characters and NPCs at risk. Like there's ways to, to add difficulty without just amping up like HP or whatever. But um, yeah, uh, hordes are a good way to do it too, definitely. Hey Iggy, thanks for checking out the stream. Uh, how's it going? Great, happy new year. Uh, Tio. Question for you. Aside from mimics, what D&D monsters are mis misunderstood in the way they are typically used by most DMs? Misunderstood, I, I don't... Look. There are lots of great ways to run things. And I would, I would not want to say that uh, anybody's necessarily making mistakes. I I think that over these, you know, really just like few years that I've been running um, running games, I think that I think that I, my, my interest is for bosses or big threats that could be dragons or, you know, whatever, some big troll or whatever. Um, anymore, I tend to think that those... Those threats, those characters should break more rules. Uh, What's part of the reason I love homebrew. I think that... There's a lot that's known about a lot of monsters, and I think that leads to more of a ho-hum nature to some combat than maybe there should be and I think that I think that um, I think that too often DMs uh, probably feel restricted by the stat blocks that they have in books or that they purchase and they, they um, don't feel as willing uh, as they could to just make some stuff up that they think sounds exciting uh, even if that may be, whoa, hey, that was way too strong. That was crazy. That's okay. It's just one time at one table, you know. Um, granted, that's not an answer to your question uh, in terms of a misunderstood monster, but I think a misunderstood way of running a lot of monsters is just to basically run it as it is in the book and not kind of have fun with it. I think all of these things can be tweaked and should, and, and 
maybe not should be, but there's a lot of fun to be had in messing with uh, messing with these ideas. Tio, I feel like your mimic approach is refreshing as a DM. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, here's a simpler answer to your question. Uh, goblins should be really annoying. It should be really annoying to deal with goblins. Um, you know, they don't. They they probably don't fight like a lot of other creatures do. Overused and underused. It's a good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I have a strong opinion about that. Um, I'd have to think about it. And I will. Okay. All right, let me hit these with some washes, which means I don't need all of these. Cobalt's gonna be fun, yeah. I think sometimes uh, DMs take the wrong lessons from things like video games. I think this is why a lot of DMs have it in their heads that um, hey, this would be fun. I'm going to give my players a battle that they can't win. Uh, this is what's going to knock them back and make them want to regain all of their previous abilities or whatever. It's a trope in video games. I don't think it translates very well to the table. <clears throat> I think that's just a... It's a it's an understandable misstep. We look at games that we like and we say, how do we take that and use it in this game that I want to run. It makes sense that it happens, but I, I don't think it's hardly ever fun. That technique is probably overused. Um, play, player, players... I think it I think the reason that so steal ideas don't steal um, don't don't steal exact implementations I guess or uh, I've, I've worded it better but the exact words are escaping me um, ideas are great and should be reused and refiltered and, and, and recreated in different ways um, but an exact implementation of something is typically going to fall flat so with anything that you like the question is what's the idea and i think in a in a video game um a fight that you can't win is attempting to do what i think a fight that you can't win is trying to create a sort of narrative moment where you feel like you're sort of playing a story playing a, a beat and then you know uh, going through those pitfalls. I mean, you can't... Um, if you want to have that experience in a video game, you sort of have to design that experience to happen. You can't just sort of say, oh, they got, they stepped on that trap and a block fell on them, and now this is their moment. So you can kind of see what I'm getting at. The idea is to have an interesting narrative moment, and that is at our fingertips at the table. We don't need to use the exact implementation of uh, you guys can't win this fight we can roll with actual character decisions and react to them and, and find the narrative moments in that kind of give and take, that back and forth. Um, it's just it, it's just really hard. It's really hard to sort of figure out. Like, I'm not even sure saying it. Like, is that true? Is that the idea? It probably depends on the exact game and the exact scenario. 
<clears throat> as to what they were, what they, the game designers, were trying to accomplish. Um, but that core idea is really interesting. But the exact implementation probably isn't going to translate from video game to tabletop very well. Iggy, uh, I've got some ideas. I've, I've done some, um, but in a campaign, yes, I have some ideas. Uh, John, not allowed to run goblins anymore. Night encounter with goblins in the woods, cunning action, hiding at the end of each round in the other TBK. Yeah, goblins can be, if you, if you play them like that, that can, they can be really, really hard. Um, non-metallic uh, weapons can be um, paint paint the weapons uh, you know dramatic colors and and say that they're they're glowing with light right so a blue sword um, or a um, you know a yellow bow or something like that right where it's like now now your skeletons have you know some level of enchantment to their weapons and now the players are going to want to collect those that's just lean lean into that uh limitation and try to make it work for you i guess okay so on the yellow if i try a light tone which I think I've previously used, but I don't remember which circle it was in, so there we go. Let's see if this brings out a, helps this pop a little bit. And I'm running it pretty wild. Because it's just gonna get blended in with the wash I use on the wood. Shouldn't shouldn't be too much. It's just a a light wash, but maybe some a little more depth to these bird scales or whatever they are. crazy cuckoo clock. Cool, that actually will end up looking good, I think. Um, let's see, can I get like a, wait, what did I use? I used my earth shade. No, I think I think a lot of stuff will uh, translate pretty well. I love using older editions for stuff. I just found a uh, what is it? An old second edition Tome of Magic at the used bookstore the other day, and flipping through it, I'm like, I could use some of these <laughs> my five E games with no changes whatsoever. Um, so I need to spend some more time with that. Um, but no, I th I think that's a great way to do it just a, another source of ideas and then you know you just sort of ad adapt it to whatever your whatever your needs are
Hey, thanks, Chronix. Cheers as well. Tio, speaking of stealing ideas, how would you reskin Journey to the West as a D&D campaign without it turning into Dragon Ball? I do not. What's Journey to the West? I do not know. Definitely needs the flesh tune, fleshy tone. What was that? Maybe this. recently found your channel six months ago and you've been a huge inspiration for being a DM. I hope you and your family are doing well and you continue to... Uh, well, thanks so much. I appreciate that. An Eastern epic like the Odyssey. Journey to the West is an old epic. Okay. Um... Gotcha. It's a good question. I think I'd have to I think I'd have to get a vibe for what tone um yeah, I'd have to get a I'd have to get a sense of what sort of tone you'd would be the goal cuz I'm not sure that I have it in my mind. So like for instance, I made a one shot for um, some friends a couple of years ago that wanted to try D&D but weren't really interested in most D&D stuff, but they um, were big Harry Potter fans. So I made a one shot that was geared towards that, which was kind of its own thing, kind of used 5e, kind of used you know, unique spells from the Harry Potter world, used potions, used all sorts of stuff like that. Um, it was really more of a flavor thing than anything else, right? It was about, does this feel like that type of world? And in order to do that, I had seen the movies, but I never read the books. So I read the books. In that case, like, I listened. I used the audiobooks, but I listened to uh, the Harry Potter series in about a month in the process of planning that, that one shot to make sure that it gave the vibe that I was going for. So I think um, to do what you're talking about, I'd probably have to embed myself more into that to, to find that feeling. Because maybe it's, you know, I mean, technically for the Harry Potter thing, it's, it's, it's kind of based on 5e, but only kind of. It's mostly just its own little micro experience that, you know, I used 5e stuff mostly because that's what I'm most familiar with, but it's, it's pretty custom in terms of, you know, the actual play. Um, Thanks, Chronix. Thanks for hanging out. Catch you later. Hey, Anthony. Thanks for checking out the stream. So, uh, I have on my desk right now, I have the Fate System, Cyberpunk Red, Call of Cthulhu. So that's my non my non D and D world. Um, the challenge for me in uh, playing these other games is that odds are, if I'm playing them, it's because I'm running them. So uh, doing a lot of learning. Um, also, uh, shoot, there's one that I always forget. That's a, a it's a space space uh, RPG. Uh, also, Blades in the Dark. Um, so these are all these are all things that I'm sort of dabbling in, but I don't have any games running in them right now, uh, mostly because I have so many games running already that I need to bring to a close or or find flexible ways to play these other things. But those are the those are the games I'm reading um, right now. Not quite your question, but it's the best answer that I have. Um. Hmm. Um, I 
don't think so. Hold on. Let me see if I... No, it's called, it's called Death in Space. Uh, it just looked cool. <laughs> yeah, so I've been looking at that. Yeah, the space game Death in Space is what it's called. Um... Yeah, Blades is definitely. I dug pretty far into that one and was going to run something in that, and then I had a friend ask me if I'd be willing to run a Cyberpunk Red game of some sort. I said, well, let me look into that now. So I, there's a lot of, it's a lot of, I'm, I'm kind of bouncing around right now. Um, is what it is what it feels like there's there's a lot of options out there so see which one I land on first let's see for the talons if I use the teeth as, as talons of this cuckoo clock then those would need to be black Yes. Mm, okay. Um, I definitely have, yeah. Um, certainly not opposed to it. Um, certainly not. I think Pathfinder would be probably a pretty comfortable game for me to, to try out. I just have not. those I think cool with how that turned out uh, not cool with this stonework yet though need to get need to dirty them up quite a bit really fast so I don't hate them because right now I hate them too light too clean Matthew, definitely. Um, hold on a second. Let's 
It's actually kind of a fun, fun look. Uh, Iggy, you said, have you written out codes for Thieves, Cantor, Symbols for Druidic and found great ways to work those into a game? I have answers to both of these um, that may or may not be helpful. Thieves can't. I've used in my games. I, I use with my rogues, and I use... I should really know who... Sometimes it's hard to track down these things, but there is a very popular set of Thieves Can't symbols that floats around online that I've cribbed for my own game, modified ever so slightly. Um, uh, that is probably a Google search away. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's everywhere. Um, I should know who, who made it, though. Maybe that's something I can look into. Um, I'd like to make my own because I think that... Well, there should be more options, but I think that there's a lot of potential in Thieves Can't that, um, that I'd like to explore. Uh, Druidic, I do have a take on in my games that is not actually a language as much as it is using um, nature to communicate. So Druidic is not necessarily a set of symbols, but it's more like a Druid can like read um, tree bark or can send messages to uh, leave messages for other druids, um, you know, on the on the the bark of the tree or through the, you know, um, looking into the reflection in a, in a in a spring. Let's say like these types of things. Tio, question for you in chat: Am I the only DM that reuses retired players as NPCs? Nope, definitely not. I have my first druid running an inn. My artificer runs a plane shifting blacksmith. Right? Yeah, totally. I, I think that's. I think that is the peak. That is the ideal. It's why I'm always. I love when uh, players are willing to retire a character rather than like basically, you know, kind of running them ragged and and sort of getting them killed to retire them. It's 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 really fun when players uh, player characters survive for exactly exactly what you're talking about. Yes. That is definitely a campaign goal. Obviously, if the players don't make it, they don't make it. But if they do, um, super cool idea. Thanks, Iggy. Have a good one. Yeah, that doesn't look threatening at all. Um, what kind of tongue should come out? Probably a probably a green tongue. I think I've done enough flesh colored tongues. Let's do a a really vibrant green nasty thing. Hey. Cheers, happy new year. Nice job, we made it. And I still have entirely too many, too many mimics in the new year, but that's okay. Yeah. It's the new year somewhere, or, you know, it's not. Until it is, and then it's everywhere.
Uh, thanks, Tito. Thanks for hanging out. Enjoy your time. You never know. Could be here painting mimics for a long time. Oh, I'm Eastern. Eastern time zone. I've never been somebody who could paint things disassembled and then assemble them but man it would be nice sometimes if I was when I'm trying to fit things needs a quick wash of the wood. This guy. Anthony, that's a perfectly reasonable question when faced with the unreasonableness of what I'm doing. Um, so, it probably will be a mimic dungeon. I've had so when um, I've had a number of encounters in sort of dungeons and things that I've wanted to do that. Um, because I use so much terrain and minis and stuff would be helped by having lots of mimic options. <clears throat> um, I have links usually in the in the description to where these come from. Galadoria Games uh, is the primary model designer represented here, um, but they actually provide sort of the before and the after, right? So if it's a you know trap door and then it transforms, like they have both, and I really like that. And so I want to do a lot with it. And I've had this whole set sitting here uh, in a bag mostly for two years. Um, finally wanted to get around to do it, and I uh, crafted this out of a, a little plastic toy chest and das clay, made sort of a, a giant mimic. Um, and I want to paint this uh, for my desk. Um, and I thought that this would be a good opportunity to just go mimic crazy, pull out all the mimics that I had, and get them all painted, and then I can use them. Excuse me, use them in my games. That's the big idea. I didn't necessarily realize it would be. I think I'm up to like four streams doing mimics, um, but that's okay. I, I don't. I, maybe my brand is slow crafting. It just takes me a while. But there's basing and priming and. You know, I like to paint things from a black sort of undercoat, I guess. Um, and hey, what's the rush, right? So, yeah, this could, this could do. I, I mean, I really hate the teeth, but the teeth aren't super awesome in this model anyway. But I can still do that better, and I can do a blue wash on the eyes, even though it may not be super clear. Let's fix the... Uh... You know, I think 
new players are the best. It's so fun to introduce new players to so many things in D&D. Um, doing that with Mimics has been great in my games as well. This guy, a wine barrel. It was actually a pretty decent paint job. I think I can pretty much just put him on a base. This bugs me that he's not on a base. Can't go wrong with that. in here. Uh, Matthew, I have a box of speed paints over there that I just need to open and experiment with. Um, so no, I don't think so. It's just another tool. Maybe having speed paints on my shelf will make me a fast painter or a fast whatever -er, but paint specifically but I bet I will find a way to make that slow too no nope, I just think it's another tool you're fine you uh, are unlikely to get get judged with your process here I think everybody does stuff in different ways that's cool It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And that one's okay. Okay, so let me start to move these about. So this one just needs a touch of black on the rim. Maybe, maybe it doesn't, but I'll still, I'll still do it. I really liked using that. I might have to do more 
mimic painting using goosebump book cover illustrations. Tim Jack Jack Jacobus Jacobus. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, um, but he was the illustrator for Goosebumps books back in the day, and his art is so cool, um, really inspirational. In fact, he doesn't do uh, R.L. Stein, uh, author Goosebumps, is still, still writing these books for kids, uh, which is awesome uh, nowadays, but uh, Tim's art isn't included anymore. He's not a part of that project, and I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to see the same spirit for me. I guess that's I guess I just that's the nostalgia working against me, right? All right. These guys are free now. <laughs> Got barrels. You know these sacks. These sacks have been staring at me. The sack mimic. It's like a little, little sad mouth. Oh, there's another one there. I think I could probably get these guys all on this. with my blue tack. If it hasn't sunk too far in. There we go. <clears throat> it will be it will be nice to move on to my next craft after this so I can <laughs> have a different source of monster and D and D inspiration on the table. Um, but I, I don't want to I don't want to pivot into other projects until I have this one done. You know, you know how it goes. One in, one out sort of thing. At least as long as the inspiration there is probably the best way for me to get stuff done. I should say. Favorite D and D monster. What are the um? Um. False hydras are fun. Mostly for the, for the way that they play into the story and the and the um, investigation. Not necessarily for like. The combat, but like the lore of the monster and the way you can use it is really fun. Um, oozes, I really, really like using oozes at a low level. Um, I think it's a really interesting threat uh, to low-level parties because, you know, what are you gonna do now that you're you're in the dungeon and your sword was just damaged, right? Or your armor has been damaged or whatever. Uh, as an ooze burns or eats through, you know, your simple leather strapped armor. And that's always exciting and that's hard to, that's hard to get at, at higher levels. Caden, uh, Warhammer, I'm sure I would like it. Uh, I'm not sure that I can do it. <laughs> I'm not sure I can take it. I'm not sure I could fall into that as well as, as what I have with terrain and, and stuff. Matthew, what is your favorite folk tale that has given you the most inspiration? Hot glue oozes are awesome. It's an interesting question. Folk tale inspiration. So 
So, and maybe that maybe this uh, maybe a weird answer is that I'm not sure that I do get a ton of inspiration from things like that. When the, the things that, that so, um, I've I read. I read fantasy books as a kid. I don't think that they ever inspired me. Um, when it, a lot of people into D and D and TTRPGs seem inspired, uh, commonly inspired by a lot of the same stuff. Um, I enjoyed Lord of the Rings as a kid. I think mostly because uh, they were not boring and they had high accelerated reader points for being big books. That's that's mostly what I remember back then. I wouldn't say that they had a huge influence on me. Um, <clears throat> but Choose Your Own Adventure books did. Goosebumps did. Um, the Twilight Zone definitely did. Um, so I'd say that was that's that's always been the types of things that inspired me. Um, you know, Indiana Jones, right? Um, movies, TVs, comics. Um, that's where I think I draw the bulk of my inspiration, which is funny because, like, as much as I run, you know, D and D in a fantasy world that's very much with the appearance of something like The Hobbit or, or Lord of the Rings, um, I think that where where I draw my um, sort of creative aspirations from is not necessarily those works. Um, yeah, but you draw out of a hat any episode, uh, which I sometimes do, from the original run of The Twilight Zone, and I could probably make a arc, a, a campaign arc around that, and have a ton of fun doing it. Sacks. Sacks are probably the lightest brown. Um, yeah, they probably all need to be painted basically the same colors because if they're on the table, you don't want to have one stand out. That would sort of defeat the purpose or have some issue where it's actually that one that changes, but the minis don't match. So I'll probably just paint them all the same. Matthew, you really like the idea of witch covens, but you're not sure how to run them. Same with cults and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> I can't say that I like know how to run uh, witch covens, but I did finally get a chance to run a proper coven uh, for one of my groups um, in a town that they visited. Um, and uh, they wisely quickly uh, took out each of the witches one by one before they had a chance to fight, before they were in a position to fight multiple at once, which, um, you know, a coven, a coven of witches is, um, witches are interesting because they are, they'll help each other, uh, but they're not necessarily friendly toward one another. I, I at least the way I envision them is, is they, they're also antagonistic towards one another. Um, you know, they'll lie, cheat, steal. They're they're only faithful to themselves. <clears throat> so that provides a lot of interesting opportunities when a player group is navigating witches, right? Because maybe the witches could be turned on one another. Maybe one of the witches is not as bad as the other witches. Um, but I would generally, in terms of, like, how to run them for, like, combat and things like that, I would just make sure that, you know, here's... Uh, you know the sea witch here's like the nightmare witch or the eldridge witch here's all of them and then make sure that there are special almost like layer actions that they can do if they're fighting together um, they should get exponentially stronger if more and more of the coven is available for a fight cults and, and cults I feel like are big investigation like you know sort of uh, I would I would take inspiration from like Lovecraftian horror stories and and um, you know if you ever played a there's a board game called Mansions of Madness that hits this tone and this flavor really well that 
you know, an unsettled, an unsettling town and try, trying to piece together what's going on before they get you to, um, that's kind of where my mind goes with a cult. Absolutely. Yeah, the witches um, helping one another. And I, and I think the, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to find different ways to explore how to run some of these things, sometimes it's kind of sort of that uh, series of, of taking the ideas and going smaller, smaller, smaller with them. So like, if, if there are witches in the region, what does that mean? And sort of kind of playing that world building game a few times down, because probably the fact that there are witches in a town or witches in a region or witches in the hills or whatever is going to have an impact on the area, which is going to start to give you clues as to how to sort of run the witches and, and their impact on the world. Anthony, do I play a lot of board games? Yes, um, or at least I did before tabletop games. <laughs> Um, they sort of dominate now, but I think uh, board games were definitely a gateway. Mansions of Madness in particular uh, was one of the last really big influences that kind of pushed me over the edge into going like, okay, I'm going to actually try, you know, being a DM. Because uh, I love that game, played it a bunch. Um, really, really cool stuff. Um, but definitely still have a pretty healthy game board shelf uh they just unfortunately don't get used all that often anymore but they will they'll they'll come back out of hibernation at some point <laughs> out of their slumber the the last stuff that i was really really getting into before kind of moving entirely over to D, &D with all my game time um i really liked the the legacy run of games. Pandemic did it. Risk did it. Um, I thought that stuff was really, really cool. Um, changing board games, board games that, you know, you play it a certain number of times, but it's, it's evolving with you. I mean, definitely, you know, it being a stepping stone type of game into, into tabletop makes a lot of sense. Um, Matthew, I, 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 I love, I, I think beating up on books is awesome. Um, yeah, make them, wear them in. Um, gnome, why can I... He's always on my, uh, I'll, I'll put a link, I'll drop a link or somebody will find it before, uh, <clears throat> I blame, I blame the time of night, uh, but they make great stuff. The, 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 the brand name that I can't, that I can't recall, uh, that for some reason I thought would even just be on here, but it's not, um, really, really cool. Uh, artists making stuff out of spell types. Um, I would recommend their stuff. I'll I'll put a, a link. I've I've shared a link out before because um, I think his stuff is really cool. But they also I think you probably can't quite see, but this is also by his artwork up here on the walls by the same guy.
Sorry, I'm <clears throat> trying to pull up. Ace of Gnomes. What did I say? Gnome something? Because I'm an idiot. Ace of Gnomes. They're super cool. And they have um, all sorts of interesting stuff on their site. Go buy all their stuff. Uh, you won't be able to help yourself. It's really cool. Ace of Gnomes made the Burning Hands mug. Um, it's one. Of, it's one of those uh, art shops where they make a bunch of different cool, sort of D and D inspired stuff in that style. And then you can get a canvas print, you could get a T-shirt, you could get a mug, um, and a Burning Hands mug. It's like, psh, give me, give me one, give me two, give me three. Like that makes so much sense. How did this not exist? Uh, love their art style. Super cool. Hitting these with this tan color real quick. Definitely going to take a couple of coats to get the coverage. I'm sure speed paints will help with this eventually once I test mine out. Probably have to do some sort of a red, red mouth, red mouth and eyes maybe, or yellow beady eyes and a red mouth to really make it stand out. Speaking of standing out, so we've got the tongue action over here. Need sort of a slimier green, I think, to go in there. Sort of a yellow green, or like a, a jungle green, or a poisonous cloud, maybe a little bit of both. Got two paints, not sure what to do, just mix them together. white, I think.
<clears throat> it's definitely nice that some of these mimics paint up a little bit faster than others. It's just that dry time that costs all the time. Any Zelda fans in chat? I'm a pretty big Zelda fan myself. I've always wanted to. I, I've always wanted to run a fetch quest, uh, like in Ocarina of Time, the Big Ron Sword. I've never tried planning one out, but I think that could be really fun. Just sort of a a long series of handoffs from one party to another, spread across the world, that does eventually amount to something cool. Seems like a a fun little puzzle quest to give. You know, you have to it have to be very carefully done because it could easily become super super tedious or annoying for a group. But if it uh, if it worked out, that would be pretty rewarding for the player that sticks with it. It'd just be a question of just how long they would do it. There is probably a Zelda game at this point for everyone. There are so many Zelda games. Um, not every one of them might be for everybody, but there's probably there's probably one out there for everybody. That 80s room. Thanks for checking out the stream. And for dropping in a hot take right off the gate. Never liked Zelda. Oof. That's okay. What what uh, what kind of games do you prefer? Uh, I have not, Matthew.
that 80s room. Atari 2600 Battletoads was good. I love it. You're on, you're on a whole other planet. Here for it. You're living up to your name. That's for sure. That's fair, 80s. That's, that is the one consistent thing across most of those games is there's gonna be some, some element of puzzle solving or whatever. I need to put a little circle target next time on my uh, paint table here so I know where to always keep my paint handle. One puzzle game that I've never been able to stick with, and I, I tried even as recently as this year, um, the original Myst series. I want to do it. It's just really tough. <laughs> really tough. It's a, they're nearly impenetrable for me. Um, but I'll probably go back and try again. I just have to, you know embrace uh, looking things up because there is a limit to my time and patience but they're classics and I I used to play them as a kid and never knew anything that was going on never did anything substantial in them and I'd, I'd like to change that I mean mist is definitely the the one of the more most extreme examples of the genre I think it's It's pretty damn, I would say, almost hostile as, as far as uh, game design goes. I have not played Outer Wilds. Obviously, once the teeth dry, I'll have to dirty them up considerably. Uh, go in there with a green wash. Once that part's dried, everything else has already been washed except for the door. Dragon's Lair, there you go. That's 
you know. Uh, that's what's the what's the genre considered for Dragon's Lair? That's sort of the you click wrong and you die, right? There's there's some there's something for that, you know, kind of the fun house the fun house dungeon of, of video games. Because it started out as a uh, arcade game, right? So it was like the, it was a game designed to eat quarters. Like so many games back then. That's what difficulty was for, <laughs> was eating quarters. up with another coat. Laser disc quarter muncher. Yeah, exactly. Just chewed them up. Of course. Username does. Gotta gotta live up to your your name your name uh, precedes you. you. Gotta keep that going. that bought my cellar door mimic a chance to dry a bit so I can begin to finish that one off a lot of a lot of wrinkles to those bags. Okay, still, still not quite there, which is okay. The barrels will probably do similarly to how I'm doing the bags. Same goes for the books. And the chair, chair stands alone. This guy's gonna be a beast to do with all those tentacles in there, but I bet it could look really cool.
especially with some patience to try to get some different colors in there. Um, Hey, that sounds awesome, that it is room. Sounds like a ton of fun. <laughs> I think I have, yeah. Some brune, brown. We all start somewhere, right? Some dice and some paper is all you really need. All the rest is just bonus. Nice to have. I started uh, running D&D &D with the Essentials Kit. That's where I began. I've heard people generally like the Starter Kit better, but I don't really have experience with both to compare it in that sense. But I generally hear people really like the, the Starter Kit more. on the tongue and a sepia something on the teeth an umber wash hmm hmm no no I don't think so sepia shade shade for the tongue.
Hey, thanks for hanging out, Matthew. Hopefully we'll catch you another time on stream. Thanks, Matthew. I hope so, too. Uh, definitely agreed on Koval. Uh, great, 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 great videos over there. Let's see, we'll let that settle. what the sepia is doing but now I want yeah I mean, the base of the teeth is like a strong tone that would be cool just just a line just a Uh, these will be probably for my 5e games. Um, I don't uh, have an exact use ready for them yet, but that's what I typically use my stuff for. Is I have a, a few 5e games that I run. And so, D&D, &D, uh, 5th edition D&D. &D. So probably for those. I also like to run a lot of one-shots um, for D&D. &D. This many mimics would be great for a one-shot. Hey, thanks. So maybe I need to do more wet blending mixing with uh, shades because that well, it's definitely making them nice and grimy. Cool. Let's see how we're doing over here. Still drying it looks like, but could use uh, some touch-ups. Just a few touch ups right here, top there. Ah, uh, yes, I can.
So the trapdoor before and after. Make sure that that even, yeah, that shows up fairly well. Not bad. Be easier once they can sit next to each other when the one dries, but. I need to set up a camera that's more specifically for highlighting individual minis, so I always have a spot that I can drop things. That might be something I think about. Well, I definitely like now that the, the door is all painted up, and I'm glad I went with the, the lighter stone because it has a very, like, I don't know, very classic, friendly kind of dungeon feel to it. Like, I could see that. I could see using that in a lot of situations and it being very enticing, very inviting, which is, you know, that's good. That's good for, that's good for a mimic. That's what they want. Let me get... something gray. Uh, I believe the trapdoor mimic is from Galadoria Games, G-A-L-L-A-D-O-R-I-A. -L -L they have a whole mimic collection. That's where I got a lot of this stuff from. Well, good. I've been working with it a bunch, so I'm glad it's beginning to come together. Um, key thing is that none of the cameras are braced on this table because this table is, see, well, whatever table I'm working on, I'm touching it, it's bumping, it's, makes everything shaky. So as long as everything is somehow braced to another surface, it tends to make everything seem uh, a lot more workable. Quick, quick little gray base. Actually, while I'm doing that, where did my gray go? What was I literally just using? If I space out that quickly. What was I just... Maybe I used all of it. My nuts. Um, weird.
that gray drying. Take a look at this guy. Pretty jazzed about him, honestly. I think I'm pretty good with that. Um, I just need to fix the base. <clears throat> That's a good question, Anthony. Um, yes, they do. Yep. Um, you know, so they've 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 been warned. Um, and honestly, I don't think that there's much in them that surprises them. Like, I don't I don't really think about it. I mean, they're definitely not made for them. Um, Every once in a while, I get to tell a story about them, and they like that. And I tend to like I'll link that to them if I'm like, hey, I just talked about the villains you guys fought. You know, remember that dwarf inventor? Here's a, a video about them or whatever. Um, but even that only sometimes, because again, like they, their experience of everything and their experience of me as a DM is a lot different than my content. So, but they they are all very supportive. They're cool. Um, some go more out of their way to avoid any seeing any of it at all because they don't want to even be potentially spoiled on anything at all. Um, but I think everybody's mostly pretty chill about it, and they they get it. that are tying them definitely maybe a tan color maybe but like the specific the specific rope tan it's not what it's called but it's what it feels like in the sole <clears throat> all right so this is the annoying part of the Only annoying if you want the rope to be a distinct color. This would have been a good orange for my that other mimic mouth. It's tan, but first contact here definitely seems more orange. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I've ever put in my videos that I wouldn't want my players to see. I know I've made jokes before about Oh, don't tell my players this or whatever, but it's honestly just joking. Crayola hemp tan, exactly. I think that there are topics, um, certainly that are just kind of awkward to, to, to discuss with players, even if they probably realize that, that you know, if they thought about it for a, a minute, you know, they'd, they'd probably come up with they probably in, intuit some of these things, um, you know. But but like exactly how I handle sort of scaling combat in the moment, or how I sort of you know determine how many hit points an enemy has, like those those types of things. I think would probably just be awkward to talk to players about because. It's the best case scenario is it's something that they're not really thinking about from a meta perspective. It's not for them to be concerned about unless it impacts the game in some way, in which case it becomes a conversation. But ideally, it's a lot of work that players never even notice. I think. I 
I think that's a. I think that's just like the opening, how it sits. I don't think that that's the rope. I think the rope just kind of hangs around because it's technically tying underneath, I think. So I think that's it. I think that's how I'll, how I'll do those. <clears throat> Um, kind of. I don't think that the player... Uh, it's happened a couple times. I don't think that it was necessarily intentional or that they were even thinking very hard about it. Um, you know, on the, positive, on the positive side, the way this happens normally in my games is them sort of realizing, like, hey, that's not the stat block I know, right? And in that case, it's like, well, good that that doesn't do anybody any good for you to you know already i guess know it um and yeah i mean it it it, it happens i would say most of the time it's not on purpose and if it is on purpose then it's probably a symptom of other problems but the only times that it's ever happened in my case it was really just more of a pa passing mention of the difference between what was expected and what happened, which, hey, I'm fine with that. Tedious rope. Rope of tedium. Here's a magic item. The magic item that nobody wants is the rope of tedium. What do you do with it? You paint the rope. Wait, why? I don't want to paint the rope. Well, you gotta paint the rope. What's gonna happen if you don't paint the rope? Nobody wants to find out what will happen. That's why we paint the rope. main thing that helps with these guys is that basically a wash and maybe a dry brush and they're pretty much done. Maybe I can mix it up with different different levels of brown wash. Maybe that's a good way to they're the same base colors but maybe they weather differently. So one of them's got a lighter wash Maybe there's a lighter and a, a darker and then the standard. As boring as they are to paint, things like sacks, things like sacks of <clears throat> beans or 
potatoes or whatever these would end up being probably show up on my table the most taking the time to paint stuff like this whether it's for a mimic or not um, there's almost always a reason to tuck one of these onto a table or in a corner or in a dungeon or a cellar somewhere let's see so if I, I want to do washes on those what do I have not sepia I think I'll go so I think the standard will be the earth shade and then on the lighter side, I have a light tone. And then, no, I don't want it to be like black. Uh, maybe it's an umber wash. Maybe those are the barrels and crates and, um, you know, just sort of debris, like rocks and grass, like little hills, little rocks, like, yeah, so much of that, the unsung heroes of so many scenes where it's like, wow, I'm really glad that I have these things, even though they're really, really annoying to make, um, or boring, you know, they're not, it's not, there's nothing really annoying about them, it's just, it's just a little tedious, um, so this guy I'm going to give the typical wash to first, because he'll get his monster attributes next, but might as well start him off with typical, regular brown wash. I swear this one's going to look like a sock puppet. And I'm okay with that. Okay. Cool. Let's see here. Are you ready? See you, Anthony. Thanks a ton. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Hope to catch you again another time. Two sort of medium. like a coffee stain a 
That's what I would call that look. Okay. Which provides, you know, just a little bit. There's a little touch of variation. Not a ton, but. And now the umber. some with the other. Just to make sure something can be seen. Okay. Feels pretty good. And then that needs to be dry brushed, I think. This mouth, I just wanted to be like a striking red. Just like a pure, pure red. Can't get more red than pure red. Touch of that, maybe in the center. in there. I think I'll feel pretty good if I finish off this group that I've got here. Made the set of grandfather clocks made the set of trap doors and then this would be the sacks and the stool in fact I think the, um, the 
the sacks here pretty much are done. They're just drying. Let me make sure they're done because some of them may have touch-ups I need to do. Probably not. They're probably fine. They're just sacks. They're just sacks. Just dirty, rotten sacks. No big deal. Definitely none of them are mimics. Shouldn't be concerned about that. What a weird thing to be concerned about. Whatever gave you that idea. That's just weird. Okay, so this guy is going to need some help. Getting kind of Joker vibes now from seeing that. I kind of want to line the lips in like a purple. And why shouldn't I? Luckily I have this color right here that happens to be called purple like it's meant to be. Alright. Bring this around. Hey, Noel, thanks so much. Uh, appreciate that. Made it to 2024 already. Seems early, but... still have some yellow. I don't really have any yellow, but I think beady yellow eyes would be nice. I'm gonna be beady yellow. Not like that. No. Gotta be this creepier, unsettling Just used this earlier tonight, it was totally fine. Need to get one of those paint shakers. Keep saying that. If I say it enough times, I'll remember. Because the only time I ever think of it is when I am shaking paint. And I put it away, and the thought leaves my brain. Because it's not a problem that this Ryan has, it's only a problem that shaking the paint Ryan has, and he's gone now. Okay. Beady. Beady little yellow eyes.
definitely a weird looking one. Um, let's see here, so probably to be safe, another brown coat would be smart. This one has an eye, and it has tentacles. For some reason, the eye on the seat being red, maybe like red and yellow. Let's see, would that be yellow with red? Yeah, it's, it's a big enough eye, I could do yellow eye with like a red the center maybe I don't think I've done too many yellow eyes done a couple hey Dante uh, animated furniture yes uh, and, and mimics um, you know a whole whole set of them that are sort of the before and afters like that cellar door there or this uh, grandfather clock <laughs> lighting's a little tricky but you get the idea got a got a whole set of them here that Finally getting them painted up after so long. Thank you, Dante. And now this guy is just a sack of something. Oops, sack of something. Kind of a, it's got kind of a Joker face coming together right now, which I'm not upset about. This is a stool with tentacles and a big eye. And tentacles be maybe like a could be like green tentacles maybe I don't think I have any green tentacles on the table green with a yellow red eye Dante said did you make the models too or just painting just painting them some of these I 3d printed and some of these are from Galadoria games they have an amazing I think two now mimic collections um, and they do a lot of really cool really cool models like this I try to get I try to put links in the uh, descriptions of these videos so I'm sure someday I will try my hand at modeling um, but not yet I did though actually take that back I did make this guy uh, this is the um, my big probably like dice holder mimic most of the time but Technically, it's a giant mimic that could attack my players. This is made out of a plastic kid's toy chest thing or kid's chest thing uh, with uh, clay. Um, so I did sculpt this, um, which I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with. No L sack of something sounds like a, a bad high school punk band. Sack of something sounds like uh, the next general store when I need one in a pinch or it's like oh yeah of course this town has a general store it's called sack of something you just fill up a sack whatever you can fit in the sack that's they just charge by the sack just just make a sack of something it's a really 
it's a really bad idea for a store. It probably would not be. It, it would be shut down before the players leave town, I think. <laughs> Could probably put little dots. Put little dots in those eyes. If I have a deft enough hand here. Oh, thanks, Noah. Mini holders for painting, those seem really handy, needing something like that. They are, let's see if I can get it in frame, they are Citadel handles. Uh, they have a few different makes and models over the years. I also use corks sometimes, this uh, hat, this uh, wizard's hat mimic is on a cork, those are handy too. Um, but yeah, for, for lots of painting, I'm definitely down for the handles. Yeah, that's better. Well, Noel, if you liked it, I'm sure since that went well with clay, I don't have any plans yet to do more clay work, but that, um, yeah, that was definitely, that was definitely fun to sort of figure out. Um, yeah, medication bottles are also great if you have any of those handy. Really anything that kind of you can hold and grip. Um, I used to have, I still have, there's a bag up here of, because I, as you can tell, I tend to put myself in positions where I'm painting a whole bunch of something, and so I need, you know, really as many of these as I can have, because if, if this has got to dry, I could sit here for 10 minutes and wait for it to dry to go on to the next step, or I could, you know, pop another one of these guys on a handle and keep working. Um, so I used to just use corks, and I had a whole bag of those, and we use that for all these painting marathons. Should have tried more bottles. That that would have made more sense. Um, yeah, this guy looks nice and crazy. Then the, it, it's not stressful putting eyeballs on these guys because it doesn't really. <laughs> whatever I do is going to work. Um, it's not as stressful as a as a character would typically be. All right, let me get some dry brushed on the ground here. I think I need it on both of these guys. What's up, Tio? Looks like I, I, I did not finish up, so welcome back. You can hang out a bit more. Just for you, Tio. Welcome back. Uh, uh, Mateus, I think. Uh, hi, Ryan. I recently found your channel and can't stress enough how much you inspire me to be a better DM. Well, Thanks so much. You're making my year. Ha 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 ha. No, seriously, that's that's awesome. That's like that's great news. I I really appreciate you saying that, and I'm glad you found the channel. Thanks for checking out the stream. Um, I typically do streams either about crafting stuff, in this case, painting, a whole bunch of mimics, uh, or the other kind of stream that I do. I did one last night which is like a game design kind of brainstorming collaboration uh, stream with the chat. And that went super well. Unfortunately, despite all my attempts, it took me three times last night to get the stream going, um, specifically because I'm trying to record locally everything that I do so that I can actually make 
more content out of streams like this. And all of that failed that I had uh, for last night, despite all of the work. So I won't probably be able to pull together any extra videos about that. But so far, it looks like tonight's gone okay, recording-wise. So... Uh, well, as long as you got your answers to you, that's, that's the key, right? So I think like green, green tentacles, maybe a fleshy eye. Yeah, I use OBS. I use OBS and, um, what I've been experimenting with lately is a, uh, a filter for OBS called Source Record, um, because this version that you guys see is not very helpful to me later if I want to recut. I have to basically get the raw video sources for the different cameras so that I can make, you know, whatever type of video I, I need to from it. That's how I made the, the last video that kind of summarized the crafting stream. It was like a 20 minute video. Um, so yeah, just kind of figuring out all the settings for that and how to save all this footage in a way that's not going to like ruin the stream at the same time. Just another thing. Just another thing to learn about and try to uh, master is too strong a word. Fumble my way through. This is Barbarian flesh color. Uh, yeah, it works pretty well. Um, the sort of out of the box, like separate recording that it does, is still the fully combined. Uh, well, it does, yeah, it does take space too. Space is, space is unavoidable. Definitely. Do the fleshy eye bits here. Fleshy eye bits. It's a it's a name for something, but I don't know what. But I also don't like it, and it should never be used for anything. soon. Okay, do another quick coat on the eyeball. I 
say? I think I wanted the tentacles to be green. Maybe like a vibrant, sort of cartoony green. Like a jungle green. Could get behind that. forget that this green that I have is kind of annoying to paint with. Cause I'm like, ooh, I like that color, I want that color, and it's like, ah, it's just so damn bright, but it, it like spreads weird. Just, just a little bit weird. Thanks, Noel. That's very sweet of you to say. I appreciate that. Why well, I um, that it feels honest means that I have successfully duped you, tricked you, and, I, and, and uh, the ruse can continue on. It's all part of the plan. Uh. I mean, Tio, if you want, I can't promise that I'll be able to read it. Um, not a whole lot else going on in chat, so I don't think anybody will be bothered. Appreciate it to you. Yeah, those are cool. Cool little tentacles. <laughs> conversation there in my head. I think I've actually already got some of this. I did manage to get some speed paints um, over Christmas, which is awesome and exciting. Um, but I may not have room for them in my paint wall here. I may have to get creative or maybe I'll become such a fan that I start kicking out some of my old paints. We'll see. Let's see if I can do yellow. Oh yeah, yellow's hard to paint too. 
Why does yellow have to be so hard to paint? something on the, on the tips like they're green green tentacles but maybe they maybe they're just like darker on the edges for some reason I've got this no not the flat green I've got this uh, damn where to go I have a cool I have a cool green color is it this one yeah it's like a refractive green see what it looks like well whatever whatever works is what is that's my motto it works I keep I keep doing it I keep going sometimes to my own detriment but Makes them look like these little alien fingers or something. I like that. Yeah, I, I honestly, most of my painting I've figured out. I, I, I remember when I first started got it, started painting minis, I probably tried to follow a couple of videos and, and then just kind of gave up and said, I'm just going to paint it to my own standard, what I'm comfortable with. Um, I'm sure I'll find things that, you know, I care about as I go. And, uh, yeah, seems to serve me. Served me well so far. All right, Tia, let's check this out. Sounds fine to me. Sounds like a solid outline for a campaign. It's a good place to start. Thanks, Joseph. I appreciate that. Glad you think so. Thanks for popping into the stream. Welcome anytime. Just uh, more mimics than I know what to do with. You know? Coming up with fun monster color combinations. Well, hopefully fun. The goal is fun and, uh, and, and interesting and not just uh, the same tentacle and eye and tongue colors um, actually my favorite tonight has easily been when realizing I was going to be making a where is it this guy uh, this is a transformed mimic grandfather clock and in terms of picking the colors 
grabbed probably my favorite Goosebumps book ever from the shelf and said, that bird's got blue eyes, that bird's got these weird scales and stuff. It's not a great, it's fine, but it works, it works for me. It made me very happy. And now I need to paint a lot more stuff using Tim uh, Jacob, Jacob, Jacobus. I, th I think it's Tim Jacobus. I don't know how to say his last name. I need to look it up. Um, but that, that guy's art is uh, his art slaps, right? I use that correctly, right? His art slaps f f for, to me, for me, it slaps. Um, a little tan for dry brushing. Can't go wrong there. Kind of did it in the wrong order here. Probably should have dry brush the wood already. Just have to do it carefully. Got to do a few washes. This guy is basically done. So the washes I need for this one are the wood and the tentacles and the eye. I'll do the eye area first. Spill my flesh <laughs> shade everywhere. Just put this around all the way around. first tested and realized that like having the right type of shade for like the right color of a part of the mini just made like a world of difference where it's like really like a general dark shade wash is fine why do I really need to go into this one with like a red wash or this one with a blue wash or green and then I started doing that and it's like holy cow that that makes an incredible difference <laughs> So I've got a whole bunch of minis that I used to just kill with dark washes pretty much exclusively because I just hadn't realized what more was out there. Okay, that's actually a pretty heavy wash. Tio, weird question. Why do you stream here instead of Twitch? Um, 
I tried Twitch towards the beginning of the year, and uh, Twitch felt like streaming in the desert. Every once in a while, somebody would wander by. They were probably also looking for water. And it just never seemed to go anywhere. Um, not to say that I'm not willing to put the work in, but it's just like the, the challenge for Twitch is that you it feels like you have to drag people there because there's no other thing going on. Um, and then I would stream on like TikTok and people would stumble through all the time. I was like, oh, this is kind of nice, but it's kind of limiting. Not easy to do a lot of stuff on TikTok. And then when I start, as soon as I started experimenting on YouTube, I'm like, oh, this is this is great. These are these are people checking out a stream that would not otherwise probably do it, but they're on YouTube already and they see that somebody's live and they just check them out and leave a comment. Um, I, d I just don't think as much as I wanted Twitch to work, uh, I just saw it as like this is going to take a lot more effort to get there, whereas I think it might be a little bit easier to accomplish um, with my goals faster on, on YouTube. So I still have my Twitch page. I should probably do a video there. Got hard-earned subscribers over there because it's not easy. Or I should say follower, whatever the language they use is. It's not, it's not easy to get those. Um, so I should probably do some sort of post at some point over there to let people know to follow me over here instead for the type of streaming I was doing over there. And that's just part of, I think that's just part of figuring out, you know, what platforms work best for each person, what they want to do, you know. I think Twitch is probably still great for a lot of stuff, it just wasn't awesome for me. Well, I appreciate that. Shit. I mean, there's, there's a lot that YouTube doesn't have, right? What did they just add recently? Like, now you can recommend a stream, I think, when your stream finishes, which is nice, but they're, they're kind of slow to pick up on some of the streaming features that Twitch already had, but I think that YouTube will have an easier time adding that than Twitch will have trying to get people to browse their platform for short form content or whatever whatever they're trying to do I, I, I just I, I don't think it's going to work all right it, if it does it's a little bit too little too late and I'm like all right I don't, I don't care I'll go I you know what I'm I'm like uh I'm like Ariel I want to go where the people are I mean, why I, I, why try to perfect what she got right all those years ago? Creepy little guy. Uh, yeah, Twitch discovery is terrible. Um, near, nearly impossible. I mean, there are there are people crafting, um, but that crafting is one giant bucket of crafters, uh, which means that. Oh, you're modeling and making stuff and building terrain and painting things. We're going to slot you right next to everybody that builds Legos and everybody who knits and everybody. It's like th this is not, you know, not to say that YouTube has categori categorization for this stuff, um, but your content can drive people to you, whereas Twitch doesn't really have that option. I mean, Noel, well, you're welcome. I don't know what, I mean, that's can't go wrong. It's, it's a classic. Um, at least the first four or five times through your head, and then after that, yeah, I, then I then I do apologize. That was that was irresponsible of me to do. Yeah, Twitch is all over the place, but um, hey, that's that's. That's cool though that you, um, I mean, I guess it, it just shows that your interests are solid, I guess, if you found me on one platform and then refound me on another. You must really be down on this content, that's good.
if it helps to get the one earworm out and get another one in when I paint the base is black I think that often in the same tone as painting the roses red I'm painting the bases black Probably doesn't help, but I love it. Looks like a looks like a little alien has taken up residence inside of the stool. And I will now paint his base black. All his base are belong to me painting it black. Uh, true, yeah. Um, oh, that's a good one too. Yeah, they're, they're, I think on like, just like, I mean, probably less than 10 really D and D crafting streamers or just like gaming or, or tabletop crafting streamers. Like they, there just aren't that many of us. Um, for the year. I want to try my hand at DMing other modules like Deadlands or Pathfinder. That's cool. Um, on the gaming side of things, I definitely want to finish one of my active campaigns uh, that I'm DMing because uh, I have three active games. One of them, the longest one, it's time for it to, it's time for it to end. So I want to do that in a satisfying way, because um, that's a few years going with that group. I have a stack of other TTRPGs that I've been reading. Um, part of the reason that I want to sort of phase out that game is to have a little bit more flexibility in my schedule to run something different. So that's 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 the, those are those are a couple gaming related goals. Uh, to a little bit, a little bit, um, not not a ton yet. Um, <clears throat> I don't, um, but that's definitely definitely a possibility. <laughs> I'll just let that one hang. Um, let's see here. Pretty happy with some of this progress here. Got that guy. Hey, Tariq, I want to run my first online campaign, but I play 3.5, and it's hard to find any platform that supports it. That is tricky. Um, certainly is. Certainly is a challenge. There's a lot to take into account. got the barrels, I've got the hats, I've got the books. Those bases I think were for the hats. I've got the frames, I've got the table, I've got this touch-up work on these guys. 
Still leading towards the big guy. Yeah. That, no doubt that's progress though. I like, I like having the variety of the monster types too. That makes me very happy. Um, I printed some of them. I purchased others of them. And then this big one here in the back, I, I, I sculpted out of clay and a, and a toy. But I would say that we're making progress. I think by count, I'm nearly, or it must, it must be half. It must be about half. And some of these I think are gonna go pretty quick which is exciting. The hats I'll probably base on these. Well, sorry, the one hat I will base. And then the other. Uh, do I kit bash? Um, yeah, yep, yeah, uh, not all the time. Um, this is just, this was just uh, a toy chest like a plastic, <clears throat> plastic uh, toy chest. You can kind of see the pieces there on the side. Um, textured the inside with clay, and uh, there's basically like armature wire and um, I think some paper clips or toothpicks. I think I used for some of the for some of it. I'd have to check the stream. I, I did that sculpting on stream a few weeks back. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good call. I mean, definitely having, you know, kids' toys and, like, rivers of plastic around you is, is always a good source of inspiration. I have to... I can't put all of it into my bits, buckets, bins, tubs that I have, or else it would basically fill everything. Um, so I'll just sort of grab things here and there that interest me. That little red chest um, did. Uh, DAS clay, so air dry clay. In the case of that, I've used um, sculpt mold and DAS clay primarily. Um, probably just for like ease of use or whatever. Like it's the easiest stuff for me to 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 work with. <clears throat> um, Still need to figure out how I'm gonna do this, probably with like a riser. And then this guy I can paint up even though I'm gonna have to get him on something probably magnetized, but um cool. Okay, well I think that'll do it for the New Year's Eve mimic painting uh marathon. I think, technically speaking, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten pieces painted fully. I feel pretty good about that. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen to go. I think we're probably looking at another two to three of these painting streams to get everything settled. Um, three only because this guy will probably be its own session but uh yeah hey thanks so much everybody for hanging out uh if i can make a highlight reel out of this if we talked about cool and interesting stuff i'll put something together um herbert thanks for checking out the stream happy new year to you as well happy new year to everybody uh here's to an awesome 2024 um going into it with more mimics than we started uh last year with so that's that's a good start uh yeah okay well until next time thanks guys have a great night